after a grueling 40 minutes kind of fighting back and forth to be continued, ultimately able to take their advantage, take the game, looking to continue that in game two as they want to secure their spot back in the circuit here. My name is Gormizer. Joining me once again for this game is going to be Freight Train. I think he's as excited as I am to see this next game. You know, I like, you know, it was a close smite game, dude. It was, it was, it was nothing wrong with it. it, it obviously, the, the level of play wasn't an SPL level, but we're not at the SPL. We're, we're in the challenger circuit, and this is a combine team in five snakes that's looking to make their way into the circuit versus to be continued. So when you're going against the top of the lower league versus the bottom of the, the higher end league, these are kind of the matches you expect. Yeah, and honestly, being able to kind of get to the point where, again, it was kind of bouncing back and forth. We saw a lot of objective play was the real thing that I saw coming forward, where it was just like, okay, we're going to focus on the farm. We're going to focus on how exactly can we get the Oracle Harpies starting out. And then, I mean, eventually we even saw To Be Continued completely took a clean Gold Fairy into a clean Portal Demon. And even then, Five Snakes was keeping pace for pace, but we're going to see some things taken out. Robin, Kernanos, Fafnir, all banned last game, so nothing too surprising. But the Susano was taken away. To Be Continued, not going to be able to grab that. And Five Snakes, they won't be able to grab it for themselves, but they didn't want it to leak out of their hands. No, no, they got to they gotta make sure that everything's good as the bands are coming on through. The soul will be picked up one more time for Farah. Now, Gore, remember, Farah used to ADC, right? Didn't he way back when? That name, or was he always a mid laner? I feel like he's there? kind of swapped back and forth. I mean, at this point, yeah. I think every single player he's played on the soul. Played I, I, I the think, you know, the, roles, soul, yeah. the soul is a character he used to play in the ADC role. Like, for some reason, that just keeps clicking in my head that, Barrett, Crick, and Soul were played in ADC a lot of the times. And now that he's got Joshi as a real ADC, I'm kind of digging this. You know, the, the Soul and the Kronos have come out back into the meta a little bit with the in-hand mages uh, for the mid lane. And, and I kind of like Baron. It's a character he's very comfortable with and familiar with, and he did work last game. Osiris, Bologna, both making it through through here. And I do agree. I like that ability. They essentially have two tower pushers here. And with the Bologna, I feel like that gives them a lot of aggression. On the other side, we're going to be seeing it run back right into that. Actually, Epix going to be on the ROM this time. Going to not feel the Huyi this game. I guess it didn't really go the way they planned. And being able to grab that this early on with the Ganesh and the Osiris, both of these teams are kind of having like an all-star naming roster. <laughs> well, we will see as, the, again, Bologna picked in the same exact spot as they were last time. This time around, you do have the counter matchup. Well, not really a counter matchup, just the, the boxing slapping in the face matchup of Osiris that they're going to have to deal with. So the fool will end up having his hands full. As uh, you know, that wasn't intended until I realized I could do that. I not, I'm not excited about this Poseidon pick before. I'm not like jumping out of my seats going, yay, Poseidon again. I'm not for it. I think there would have been stronger picks, but I'm also not too against it. I'm kind of curious as to what they're going to do. Because I feel like a lot of this is going to rely on compatibility with the jungler. And going up against the soul, he does still have that clear advantage overall. They have, I want to say, some of the fight advantages, especially around level 5. On the other side, though, Hunbat's looking to kind of rival that one with that Fear No Evil coming online. They are hovering over Mercury right now. And if that gets locked in, that is going to be, I think, literally the first time I've seen a Mercury in Season 4. Uh, it's been a while. Okay, Rebound is going to end up locking in this Mercury selection. So... You know, for this to work, you, you got to obviously get your boy Mercury into that late game so he can get those damage items online and really just be that menace. I mean, he's obviously going to be looking to build uh, a handful of these in-hand items like Crit, Deathbringer, and so on. He will be, you know, the guy to look at. And as we switch into game here, I'm going to be saying on the other side of Lee looking at Worst Turtle, I always say this when I see a Hunbat's level five is going to be his big impact. If he can get Confrey out, knock him down, and get Farrakrik just ahead enough that Farrakrik doesn't need to be babysat, Worst Turtle has free reign of this map. He can start going to solo, go over to duo. And without a Geb in this game, it's actually going to be a lot better for him because there's not going to be that CC immunity just inherent in someone's kit. And with David Arnez, even on the Ganesh, even with the silence, ultimately, this. I'm looking at Worst Turtle as being the advantage. So something sneaky that's happening here is Rebound has gone boots to too. He's going to go a little bit less as typical. He's not going to go with the second starter item. So he's going to level up himself with the Boomer's Mask. No Blue Stone, no Death Stall. He said, you know what? I don't need that. I'm going to go with Boots too. Has the 12% movement speed. That's going to give him a little bit of extra power plus the 10 power that it has. He's got a little bit of an advantage here early. 
Yeah, that passive on Mercury really playing into that one. And a lot of people, again, they kind of forget things like that. But the movement speed going to be big for a rebound here. And that's why speed buff is even more yeah, important. It's like not it. just, oh, I'm a jungler. I want the speed buff. It's I need the extra power this buff is going to be able to give me. <laughs> I am Mercury, and I want to fight. And being able to clear out their own right now, still kind of sitting at a stagnant stalemate so far. But it's only a minute into the game. But rebound already making just the small plays really to come forward. Not going to be able to make up. I mean, bluestone pendant on the other side for the Hunbats. The in hand You'll crit get passive earlier. is going like, to be good, but yeah. That's the thing, you know, bluestone is a great, you know, but I absolutely respect this call as we do see the rotation. It's going to be for elementals here, but Worst Turtle is trying to do some work on Sanjo as he was level one still. And uh, well, with the rest of the crew here by Ellie's, they got to be careful. Rebound. Again, not going to be able to do too, too much here as Sanjo. Now he just hit level two. Okay, they might be able to look to fight. I was thinking rebound was going to come up. Doffel was just a little bit low there. Might have been able to get the grab, but farm going to be more important. They're not focusing too hard on trying to get the kills this early on because, I mean, we've seen it. Even last game, they got a lot of early kills on five snakes. And even when that translates to your kill count being higher the entire game, to be continued had the gold lead, to be continued had the map lead, and they were the ones taking advantage of everything. The big thing I'm noticing is the fact that we do have Worst Turtle kind of hovering over here on the solo side and leaving Farrakrake kind of out to dry in the mid lane up against Confrey and Rebound. Well, you know, he's so cased. Farrakrake's still level four. I mean, he's doing all right. I mean, Confrey, I kind of got to see if the levels are going on here. He's got a little bit more experience. We can find out. So, I mean, I know everything. He's almost about to hit five here, Confrey. So, uh, you know, I, I like the build that he had last time, you know, with the in hand, the haste of the towers, the general isolation. That's not a build that I disagree with by any sort of means. But what I would like to see is more of that burst, boom. There is no gap. Yes, there's a bracer of undoing, but the more you can burst, the faster you can burst, the better. Let's get that spear of the magic. Let's get that jump of isolation as well. Spear of desolation, whatever you want. Get the pen, get the power, and blow somebody up with the kraken. Then get a gem of isolation. Forget the haste of Vitalis. So am I crazy right now, or does David Arnez not have a relic? Is he just waiting to pick that up to see whatever his team needs and gonna grab the best available option? Oh yeah, actually, wow, I didn't realize that he didn't have. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> I was just, I looked down so, and I was like, all right, we got a bracer yeah. on one side. We got uh, yeah. nothing on the other side. Okay. I don't know. All right. Well, you know, he is going to maybe make that decision uh, as far as if he wants to go ahead and maybe grab a frenzy or, or something else along those lines. It is a Ganesh. I mean, right now, uh, he's obviously going to be stacking up his Lona's mask pretty easily with that passive, not going to be able to get any of the last hits. But yeah, I mean, it's an interesting call to not get any of the wrecks. You kind of see that in the solo lane, you know, when the solo laners are like, do I really need TP? Do I not need TP? Uh, level five fight, though, potentially as the Kraken will miss Confrey. I, I don't, I, that's all I can say, Confrey. Yeah, that's just another case of being kind of, it's thrown out and it does a lot of damage, but I, that's like the third or fourth time so far in the last two games that he's just not really been able to connect with it. The lockdown, not quite as good as, the, as he would It want. takes that tick. You have to, you know, you in have order to for the cripple to do work, it needs to take and do damage because otherwise, worst turtle, if you are quick enough, yeah, jump the heck out of there. Like, get get on out and don't even worry about it. Doesn't even need to use. I mean, he ended up using the purification beads, actually. I do see that. I didn't realize I, I was at a different angle, but I see the relic is down. So he ticked out of it. But regardless, he doesn't need a sanctuary if he can jump out, you know, still cracking off the mark. Yeah, and ultimately, that's just going to be a big one. And honestly, a big window right now, I would say, for 2B continue if they wanted to get aggressive. But I'm looking at Worst Turtle getting a speed buff, going to be going over towards the solo lane instead. Honestly, right now, it wouldn't be that bad. The stun not going to come through from Sanjo, but he is low health. Worst Turtle's in the neighborhood coming into the back. He does have Fear No Evil into the wall, but the Lord of the Afterlife coming out a little bit too fast oh, for him. The teleport, jump, teleport, teleport, teleport back, teleport back, go, right go. Right here, he's going to be oh. able to get that no problem right there. Doffel going to stay alive through that last engagement. No one on five snakes going to be able to counter that engagement. Sanjo going to be first blood. <laughs> Baited right there over the top. Rebound ults, but then the ball just easily cleans that one up. Rebound walking back and forth. Can't do anything. The ball cleans that. I mean, he just got outplayed. He uses the eagle rally, just jumps over the I mean, come on, rebound. Nah, little, I, I kind of smelt that one coming from a mile away. <laughs> a little suspect for rebound to go in right there. I'm not entirely sure what the play in their head was, but that's going to spell two kills and the blue buff picked up. Now, Half Devil actually going to grab that. Bologna going to be looking probably just to secure their own. Half Devil looking to have that little bit of an advantage now. And at this point, rotating over, now sitting at 101, has the lead over David Arnez, who did ultimately end up going into that bracer of undoing. But the rotations so far have been just a little bit stronger from this Terra than we've seen out of the Elephant. Yeah, I mean, right now, they're going to have a little bit of fight over here by the Oracle. See what happens there. Looks like the blue buff going to go that way. It's, you know, two to zero right now. We will see, you know, if 
they're able to sit there and obviously make a comeback. But right now, again, the old Sanguine roster looking pretty good right now. Yeah, and this is something we saw. So last week, there was a huge, just coming into EU uh, into EUCC for the last week, just roster changes galore. I think two of the teams had pretty much completely blown up and changed what they had had, like three to four members changing on each team. And I believe Joshi is the only one who has survived from the first week to this week. And last week, they were looking strong. This week, they're looking even stronger. They've obviously been putting in that work and just keeping themselves ahead. It's not enough that I say they have this easily but they are definitely keeping control of it. They're keeping their heads about them. And honestly, right now I'm actually looking at the duo lane. Joshi showing that it doesn't matter which character you give him, he's going oh, to be able to box it out. Three. Even with the elephant coming through, he's not worried. Yeah, misses the three. And I'll put it the stun right there. I don't know. I find that ability. Sometimes I like I use it and it I guess the charge time because you do have to like go in there. It, it's kind of easily juke. It's not like the worst thing in the world. You can kind of get that around, so it's not too, too bad. But we will have the worst turtle on the right-hand side. I didn't even see that as, uh, again, Sanjo. He has just been a victim. I, I mean, both games, he just seems to be just kind of getting picked on here in the solo lane. And part of me wants to say, hey, it's Bologna. But the other one just seems like Worst Turtle and Doffel are working really well. And Doffel just showing prowess as a solo laner and being able to just bully him out almost constantly. Like every engagement, every single wave, he's making sure to hit him. This tier one looking to fall. The teleport should come through. No, it actually doesn't. Now rebounds left out to dry. It's going to be taking half damage, trying to channel his ult to get away. He's going to be able to get out of there. But they force the pillars out of Ganesh right now. And just to get that slow cracking coming through, trying to find the tail end. Worst Turtle Ow. one hit away. That's yeah. all you need to find at San with the teleport oh to the God. ward will be able to get it but the bludgeon on the return gonna be able to return that one over there and while while all that's going on the gold fury just got taken by to be continued they could even lose doffel here and ultimately i'd say it's worth oh no it's completely worse but here we go i mean the bludgeon might come up to do a little bit more damage but it does not matter the foe ends up finally dying but you know what he got a kill they got the gold fury still lead four to two they increase the lead why not and I mean, at this point, they're con continuing their control of the map. I think that's the big one. They get the tower, they get some kills, they get the gold fairy, but they take this red buff afterward. They're in the jungle. And FX is just kind of having to sit back and watch as this team just comes up and says, this is all ours now. This is our territory. You do not have a right to be back here. Now, four to two are the kills. Eight minutes in, already just a little bit more action going on. It seems like to be continued. Got that little bit of oomph, that momentum. push that they, they needed the from that last game. Yeah. yeah, they're feeling good about it. 2,800 experience, 2,000 gold, give or take a few hundred right there, and really looking to continue their aggression already. I'm seeing a Fear No Evil in the blue buff. Sanjo pushed against the wall, and Sanjo pushed into the grave. Well, I mean, he, at least Sanjo got a couple kills finally. I mean, he was like 0-2, now he's 2-3, and 3, eh? so he's kind of getting himself back on the foot, but he's still two levels down. You know, Hoombots is two levels up as well. Uh, everyone is kind of having a good old time here on the side of 2B continuing. The Merkle's going to come through on top of Worst Little, but he got thrown out of the crack, and that's unfortunate. The 3v1 scenario, and he honestly almost kind of came out on top of that. If he was able to teleport to Comfrey and maybe get an in hand crit, it could have been dangerous right there. But regardless, uh, they used two ultimates or three ultimates actually on top of him. That's pretty intense for own bots. Three to kill the bats, and well, you know, like Fear No Evil's down because he used that over in the blue buff. They only get the kill. He's going to be back in about 10 seconds. By the time his ult is available, by the time the next fight happens, he's going to be able to come in high impact. Right now, though, I'm looking now at Joshi shifters, sitting so. about half health right now, trying to fight Ethix with David Arnez behind him. Going to miss that rebound, and really, it's looking like this could be bad. Jump over the wall into the Gold Fairy Pit, waiting for his team. Okay, they, they're going to have it. I thought for oh, sure he was going to get caught out there, but he's fine. Yeah, he's space barring. Half Devil pops the ultimate just for the movement speed to make sure that his boy can get out. But now Half Devil is flanking. Oh, the roll. He didn't predict it right. Had a feeling, you know, you got you got to obviously read that a little bit better, understanding that the roll is up. You got to put that a little bit further back to kind of make Joshi or FX, let's just say, uh, you know, choose the better or choose a different direction. But Joshi has to watch out. He lazy back in the middle of the lane. He's in a 2v1. And right now, sitting about half health, going to get stunned down, using those beads, turning to try and fight, oh, but the snipes are going to be coming down. One shot, going oh, to connect. Oh. Next second one, not going to do anything right there. Third one, not going to connect either. And the jukes are going to be good and actually possibly trying to turn this one around. David Arnez hey. is going to be right into the hey. wall, right into the ground again. Farrakrik this time going to be able to get that one. And Epix just forced to run away as his support falls. I feel like Wurst Total was like, yo, remember that time you wasted all those ults on me? 
get thrown into the wall, die. <laughs> it's just like, remember that time you wasted all those ups to full though, is in a 3v1 scenario, Com3, that bludgeon doing work as it is multiple gods, Eagles rally over the top, rebound has to sit there and charge the ult out, he's gonna go, and that's the Kraken that's gonna be unleashed, no brace we've undoing quite yet for the full, but he's looking to scourge life steal through it, the tether is gonna stun for one second, he's in a 2v1, the body blocks are good, Sanjo's still in trouble, here we go, the slow now in reflex stance, and Sanjo will fall the 2v1 that as the full and crew get the kill and a surrender vote has started i smell t-i-l-t tilt that was just beautiful like i if you're sanjo in that like of course you're tilted did you see the way the half devil and doffel played that like i mean just trading it in and out half devil making sure to block the shots even when he had to doffel taking just the right amount of steps back to avoid the cleave coming out from osiris and honestly like just Stand, like perfect positioning like that entire fight was just well done i would be mad if i was sandra right now and i'd be mad honestly this team five snakes right now not looking to have the same amount of control they did last time and to be continued continuing I, that f6 to continue is, their uh, aggression that that f6 is something you know that you can't really you can't have that obviously the mindset is going to be bad farragut's kind of baiting out this back i kind of thought that was happening but one more time copy going for this cooldown boots build he's not got the damage quite yet he's got the spear uh, we'll see if he's able to get some more going on. He's sitting at 1-1-1 one, one, and one as we do have David coming around the back as we have the 2v2. This is going to turn into a 3v2. Joshi misses the ricochet. He's in trouble, but can he get into the air? He'll wait it out for a little bit. He'll jump away, and now all of a sudden the rolling assault pillars don't do anything, but he can't find the kill, and now here comes the rest of the team. Half Devil going to get the root and a little bit of damage down onto Rebound, though. It's not going to be enough to find the kill, but it's enough to force him to fall back. The Kraken going to be dropped down for Half Devil. They're going to be able to pick up a second kill there. And really, it's going to be big ups for Five Snakes right now. 12 minutes in, they kind of bring themselves not necessarily back into it. They're still sitting behind about 3K gold and 5,000 experience. But they're showing that they're not just laying down for this one. They're going to be able to grab out where Turtle the Whirlpool coming down. Cripple not going to be good. Fear No Evil going to be a little bit better. They're going to be able to turn this one around. Confrey just a couple of hits away. One more auto is all it's going to take. Worst table going to be able to pick that one up. Well, you know, I, I kind of, Osiris is going to teleport in Sanjo, I, you know. I don't know if you want to fight this again, buddy. You might want to watch out here as uh, you go around. But yeah, that was really just a good engagement by the boys to be continued. They sit there, and yeah, they lose the left-hand side, but the Kraken ends up getting used. David Arnez ends up using his ult. What really secure do they have as far as this goal fear goes? Nothing. So they couldn't truly start it up. They still got fair. They still got some in-hand aspects to sit there and deal with. And now they're going to sit there and bait out this goal with the big bludgeon. You got to respect the extra damage when you hit multiple gods, man. It keeps on slamming on top of your faces. And Sanjo, probably going to fall again. Right now, Sanjo opted into a second relic and he went thorns. And I understand the kind of mentality of they keep hitting me really hard, so I'll try to make them hit me really hard so they hit them really hard. But you still die when it when it comes down to it right now, Brazen Run doing just a little bit too strong. Not sure I understand the mentality. Gold Fairy, a one hit away. The ult from the Mercury not going to be able to go. And 2B continued, going to be able to confirm that one. David Arnez right now, half health, the main target. Kraken coming down. Rebound going to fall, but gets traded out. Joshi gets tossed out that was into the, first the grave. Kraken. And right now, David Arnez, he's going to be the next one coming down. So far, I think extended three for one Worst trade, turtle. plus the Gold Fury really over there. Worst Turtle is like one hit away, but not too worried about it. Yeah, Epix couldn't get the shot off. Does it? I mean, really just ends up walking away on that. Confrey going to go all the way to the right-hand side to try to get some sort of farm in here as a... Yeah, I mean, looks like Epix is going to get chased away. Sanctuary's got a little bit of damage, and I think Epix kind of understands that. Yeah, uh, you can kind of tell that Who's that was pinged? just him standing still. Did you hear like the pings that just came out? Like you said it earlier, and I'll say it here, you're starting to feel a little bit of tilt going forward. Is right now Half Devil gonna be able to help confirm that speed buff there? We're gonna pick it up, and I feel like Worst Turtle was white making his rotation over there to uh, pick that one up. But I mean, sitting now we're 14 minutes, 14 to six to be continued. Leaving it over five snakes, and I believe I heard you mutter that your smite crashed. Yeah, unreal. Uh, yeah, you know. It gave me a crash report log. So, you know, I'm still here. I'm talking to you, Gore. How you doing, man? How's the game going? What's up right, there? So far, you know, at least I'm here so you can talk Nothing to me. has you know, really changed you explain, in the last 30 seconds. You explained what's going on to me, and I'll still analyze it. You know, I, I got you. I got you. You know, like, just tell me what's going on, and I'll analyze it from my perspective, not just what the hell's going on. I mean, right now, the biggest thing that I'm seeing that might be going out. So, Confrey, this is something we saw last game. Looking like he's going into probably the exact so same build. I mean, you were mentioning it earlier that that's kind of the staple Poseidon build, but it didn't really work out for him last time. Don't know if it's going to work out for him again this time. 
No, definitely not going to work out again. Look at your behind. You can't go. That's a very expensive build. Gem of Isolation, Haste and Fatalis. Those are expensive items. Where's like the Quick Burst? You know, where's those other things like, you know, the Bancrofts or. Oh, but with that actually, know, the... a Kraken going to be thrown down over here at the tier two. Looks like Doffel's still trying to fight forward. It's going to be a four man gang on the Doffel, and Worst Turtle is going to fall back. But Bologna, not caring. Eagles rally over the wall, going to be able to get out of there, no problem. Confrey has the Aegis Force. Kraken is down. They drop, I think, two ults over there as we see FX actually going to go down as well. Worst Turtle caught out a little bit of damage. But overall, it looks like it might be the full retreat. Disapparate going to allow Farrakirk to get out of here. Rebound looking for the pull on anybody, but not going to be able to find it. Pillar's going to be dropped one more time. Thrown back. Fear no evil going to be good. Forcing the beads. Confrey taking damage. Josh is going to get the 2v1 over there on the left-hand side. And Doffel still running away, still looking for something. Rebound low. Confrey low. They're trying to fight into it with the Terra ult. They will be able to do that. Worst Turtle overhand smash. One auto going to be able to find the kill. Chasing down. Looking for rebound. The surrender vote has started. All they need is the one more hit. Overhand smash confirms that one the tower shot not enough to kill him david arnez falls down triple kill for the jungler right there four for none trade so far sanjo looking to fall very shortly after and that's going to be the surrender vote coming through with rate that's going to be a 16 minute game a clean pickup i watched it on stream find yeah. the 2-0 i watched i watched that little fight on stream obviously so it was delayed i mean uh yeah i mean that was just a clean kill uh, worst turtle just on the Hoombot, so so effective right there. As I was watching it, you know, ends up getting those kills. Sanjo couldn't really do anything at two and five, he had that mystical mail, but that was about it. Uh, you know, it just comes down to I, I really think they weren't able five snakes again. Comfrey ended up getting a couple more kills this game, but still, you know, the Poseidon wasn't as effective as it could be. And I'll say, I think honestly, when it comes down to it, no matter what your strats, no matter what you've been scrimming, or what's even at this point been happening in the combine, Mercury. I understand it. I know the crits. He can hit hard. He hits like a truck. He's a hyper carry when it comes to late game. They had two of them on the team. And I feel like that kind of detrimented them because it's like, all right, you guys need to hit level 18. And then you can start taking every 1v1 you want. You can fight Doffel, Half Devil, Joshi, anyone on to be continued. Didn't get there. He was still level yeah, 12 I mean, at the I'm end versus at... Worst Turtles level 16. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at those stats right now on the on the, on the stream of the I mean, this worst turtle just had his way with anything he wanted to do. I mean, over 10k damage. I mean, looking at all this damage, I mean, 15k for the full 10k. Joshi has 7,500. Fair almost has 10k. I mean, on the other side of the charts, I mean, player damage, Comfrey, 50, 5,800. Sanjo, 7,000, but he was just getting 2v1. So that's kind of more fake damage than anything. I mean, you know, when the support, Ganesh has almost as much damage as your mid laner and has more damage than your jungler, there's kind of an that's issue. That's when you know something's going wrong. Five Snakes right now not looking like they're at the strongest. And I believe we do have some standings for you here as we go through because we were running two sets. We saw the one to be continued with their 2-0 going to be sitting up at the top with three points right under them, tied with them, I would say. Victoria's Secret going to be getting that 2-0 against Cool Name pending as well. And it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be an interesting match for that because I know we're going to have to see these two play again later. And they're already leading the pack. I, I am ready to see, you know, cool name pending and see what they can do as well. Obviously losing to Victoria's Secret. Uh, so that's a surprise. You know, Victoria's is that combine team. So they were able to take out one, you know, five snakes couldn't do it. But hey, we might see a different team in the challenger circuit. But we're getting ready to go over to Tier Monster, everybody. We don't have enough time to show the full game of uh, what we have planned next. So if you are ready to join for some more CCEU action in the relegations, the C will be playing in the circuit next week. Please join us over there on the Tier Monster channel. We uh, appreciate all you guys hanging out with us by all means. And again, yeah, we'll see you over there at the Tier Monster channel in a little bit.